Hello, Magic community on YouTube. I'm T1 Glycerelf, here with an episode of Magic the Silliness. No, I mean, well, we're playing EDH Arch Enemy, and it's a 5 on 1, so it might as well be Magic the Silliness. Um, I'm playing Animar, a Soul of Elements, versus Nylia, God of the Hunt, Daxos the Returned, two Omneth Locus of Rage, and a guy whose name I never get correct. Mizix of the Is Magnus, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, this actually is a video that, unfortunately, because the battery died before it finished, uh, is not going to be caught entirely on camera. You'll still know who wins um, by the time this is over. Um, but as a result, I'm actually going to use it as a channel announcement video, and you can just have this playing in the background if you'd like. Um, you can, if you don't want to listen to me, just cut the volume or tune me out and watch Animar do his thing, which is to say, dirtle for five or six turns before well, letting the schemes kind of carry me for a bit until I finally go off like a maniac, because that's Animar for you. Uh, resolving the mulligan now, we have this weird, I'll say this before the announcement part of the video gets started, we have this weird um, partial Paris that we've been using at the store um, in our playgroup here, which is instead of, like, if I start at 7, I'll remove or I'll uh, set X aside and then draw X minus 1. Instead of doing that, uh, the first one is partial free, I guess. So you set aside X and then you draw X, but if you do that again, then you set aside X and X minus 1 comes back and so on and so forth. Um, that's the way that we've been doing it. I understand that to not actually be the correct way to do it, like if we're playing officially, but all of these are unsanctioned, they're casual, we're just, you know, being good friends, as you probably saw from the last video, where, you know, me being the jerk that I was, um, played Animar to great effect. Uh, you see the first scheme does actual nothing as far as this turn is concerned. Um, Trust me, they get better as they go on, but I need quite a bit of time to build up. In any case, with the actual announcement portion of the video, uh, so a few things I wanted to get off my chest while I'm here. Um, so, uh, like I said, uh, whenever I have a... well, maybe I didn't say it quite this way, but whenever I have an incomplete video, from now on, I'm going to try to turn it into a vlog video. Uh, something like this. You can listen to me, you can watch the match, you can do both. Um, if this happens again, hopefully it won't happen too often, so... But this is a very long game. Uh, I'm not even sure if we'll have the entire thing. Let's see, what's showing up on here? How long is it? How long is this match? Uh, well, it's 11 gigabytes on my computer at 1080p, so... It's something like an hour, I would imagine. Um, in any case, that's the reason for this one. Hopefully that won't happen too often, though. Um, but you can look forward to more of these in the future, potentially, at least. Uh, the first major announcement... Let, let's start with the... You want the good news or the bad news? I'm assuming you want the good news first. You know. I want the good news first, so let's start with that. Uh, the card game that I've been designing um, is... So two of the first two sets are already actually designed. The comprehensive rules are written. Um, it's, the business plan is written. At this point, it's basically a matter of, uh, getting the funding itself to get the business started, and getting the art, uh, for it, which will hopefully come after the funding. Now, I haven't gotten any loans for this yet, and I haven't, uh, gotten any venture capital yet, any angel investors, anything like that. Um, I've just recently, relatively recently, finished the business plan, and frankly my plate's been kind of full lately. Uh, but one thing that I'm strongly considering doing is looking to crowdfunding, and the reason for that isn't just because, oh look, I don't want to go into debt for it. There is actually a, a reason. Uh, those of you that have been following me for a while and maybe heard me mention a thing or two about this card game, um, one, of the, one of my prides in it is that I would like for, you know how certain businesses give a certain percentage of their profits to charity? Uh, I would very much like for that to be the case with this game, uh, giving at least a strong percentage. 
I like for the ability to, once the business becomes sustainable, uh, perhaps even turn it to a non-profit that gives a uh, hundred percent of what would have been its profits to charity. Um, so you could, or a, you, what's the term, a, a mission-oriented enterprise, I believe is another way of putting it. Uh, that's something that I'd be interested in, in doing, but I don't want to run the risk of making it too great, like for example, a hundred percent of what would be the profits, until it becomes sustainable. Uh, so with crowdfunding, we get to that point sooner. Um, hopefully we, we go straight to that point, but I'll operate under you know, a, a less optimistic scenario and say we get part of the way there. Uh, but you can certainly look forward to that being one of the stretch goals, the highest stretch goal perhaps, for the, the business, for Mind Wide Open. Um, but it is an online card game, and its main gimmick for those that haven't been that haven't heard of this before, um, that haven't heard me speak about it, is that players take all of their actions at the same time. So you're taking your turns at the same time. You have simultaneous priority, um, and you make your choices at the same time. In a similar way to uh, how Hearthstone really couldn't be done unless it's on a computer. I mean, you could, but then you lose a lot of what Hearthstone has going for it, uh, like the RNG. RNG cards, you can't really do that in paper, in, on cardboard, but you can do that on a computer. Uh, similarly, this is uh, simultaneous action selection, I believe is what it's called, is much, much easier um, when you actually are doing it on a computer. So, that's the main gimmick. Um, we're going to use, that's, that's why it isn't just going, that's part of why it's not just going to be a physical trading card game that I'd sell to, like, WotC or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, some company, Upper Deck. Um, in order to do this, well, actually, actually, before I even get to that point, uh, the cards themselves come in two forms. Primarily, there's... I'm, the, the names that I've given for them so far are actions and reactions, and I'm assuming that everyone here, pretty much everyone who's watching this video, knows how to play Magic. Um, bonus points if you also know how to play Yu-Gi-Oh, because those are my two biggest inspirations for this. You could say that the actions are... Um, well, actually, it's probably better to say what the reactions are first. Reactions are your instance in Magic, or your trap cards, or quit plays, in Yu-Gi-Oh! And the actions are everything else. Uh, more specifically, you play a reaction in response to something, and an action, pretty much all of them, I, without getting too much, I'll, I'll go over this in more detail later, I'm sure, but the vast majority of them actually have two casting costs. Um, one of them just gives you essentially a sorcery or enchantment style effect, and then the other one gives you the same effect while also making it into a creature. And so most cards in this game actually have those two forms. You, you're, for those of you that are interested in playing um, the Awaken cards that are in Battle for Zendikar right now, that's what a lot of these cards are. Just running much, much cheaper. Well, I say much cheaper. Running all the way from costing you zero mana I'm doing air quotes here, there's no real mana in this game, to, uh, I think that the record we have so far is 12, although, like, similarly to how Hearthstone gives you 10 mana, but some cards go over 10, but that, that they have built-in ways to cut their costs down, like, you know, based on how much life you've lost, for instance. Um, we do have some that are like that. In any case, uh, this game as I said, is lacking some art uh, for the cards. That will be very important. And especially if I'm looking to start, say, a Kickstarter campaign, I would very much appreciate having, for instance, a logo. So if any of you out there are interested in making anything, actually, any regular art, um, a logo, I hate to say, but because of not having funding for the business yet and because of some other factors that I'm about to go into in a few minutes, I don't right now have the ability to pay you. Uh, I would very much like to, but right now I just, I simply don't, and I apologize. Um, 
I might be able to pay you later. I should be able to pay you later. I, you know, if this if this gets off the ground, I will pay you later. And I can offer you uh, future work with us. You know, um, if you if you work with this, then I'll I'll keep your name in mind when we're actually you know looking to hire people to commission art for the actual cards themselves. Um, an interesting thing that I find out about this about this game, and the art specifically, is that, like I said, so these, these actions have two forms. Uh, they're unmanifested, whatever, the, I'm not sure what the word I'm going to use for that is, transient or, transient sounds nice, but for the ones that linger, that like the enchantment style ones, not sorcery style ones, that doesn't really work. I'll, I'll come up with a name, just unmanifest, unmanifested sounds bad, it sounds kind of coarse. Um, but the ones that become creatures, if you will, are called manifest. Now, as far as art goes, the reason that's important is because the art itself actually changes. Uh, again, one benefit that we have of using the online medium. Um, so, for example, let's say that I have a car, uh, an action that just draws me a card. Uh, the art is one picture. And then when I manifest it, I'll draw a card, I'll get the creature, and the art will change. Specifically, the art, it's the same picture, but it zooms in or zooms out to a certain part of that picture. For those of you that are familiar with hidden art, like or hidden image art, that's a lot of what I'm going for in this. If you look at it one way, it's a certain piece of art. If you look at it another way, it's a totally different, you know, piece of art. That's what I'm going... well, I say totally different, but the, the subject is different, at least. That's what I'm going for here. Um, the, the first thing that comes to mind, and I don't have any particular card in mind, but uh, if you're looking at a, a zoomed-out room, for instance, and or, or a zoomed-out look into the interior of a room, it's a basement, um, and when it manifests, it zooms in on one particular item in that basement that you wouldn't have noticed otherwise. Or, it's somewhere in the shadow, there were some eyes, uh, or a figure, and when it zooms, you can see that figure. Alternatively, it could zoom out when it manifests. Uh, you could have what appears to be just a treescape, and then as you zoom out, you see that the landscape is forming, like, uh, I don't know, a face, a human face. Um, pareidolia, I believe, is what that's called. When you see an image in something that doesn't necessarily contain it, like the famous man on the moon, or the man on Mars, those are pareidolia. Oh, wow, I'm getting off track. Uh, if you know any, even if you yourself aren't very good at the art, uh, at drawing or graphic design, painting, any sort of artistic talent like that. If you know someone who is, please, please refer them to me. Um, shout outs to Robert Knight, who if I remember to do so, I have included a, uh, a link to his channel. I'm looking at you. I, you are, your Blight Steel Colossus fan art was amazing, and so something like that I would be very interested in, but similarly to how when Magic uh, was first a game when it was the art you look at the art for alpha it goes all over the place in terms of art style um, I have a similar lack of preference right now it's not going to be hearthstone where everything follows roughly the same art style or what magic has become nowadays um, I, I don't have that preference right now I don't know that I ever will maybe but for right now at least you know, beggars can't be choosers, I can't be picky. Uh, and plus, I I don't know what I like as far as art style uh, for this game. I can tell you that the game has a modern Lovecraftian feel to it. Modern in the sense that it's taking place in roughly the present, perhaps a little bit into the future. Um, but the technology will be at least very similar to what we have uh, nowadays. In you know, in the first world and whatnot, and the Lovecraftian sense is not because there are, you know, Eldrazi running around everywhere, um, but because of 
oh, I, I don't know if I want to give away aspects of the story yet. Let's just say that there's a sense of cosmic minuteness and horror that I, I plan to uh, add into it. Um, I also, and this is maybe going to sound a little bit weird, but I also don't have a preference for the color red. Um, a lot of that has to do with color blindness. Uh, Red-green color blindness is the most common form um, in, or at least in men, and I think in general. Um, and so as a result, if I'm going to leave out red or green to make it easier on people to see what all is going on just as well, um, then my preference is to leave out red. The cards themselves, minus perhaps the art, don't have any red in them. Red is not a color in this game. Um, but if you want to for your art, if you feel that it needs it, then by all means go for it. There's a lot of blue, a lot of green, a lot of white and black. Um, and that also goes towards the, I guess, Lovecraftian sense. Uh, but I also saw what's now become, I think, a very famous uh, Game Theorist episode on some of the psychological effects that red and blue can have on you. Um, without, get, without going too much into it, red has... Uh, Red makes you more reactive, more impulsive, more aggressive. Um, when you see red versus blue in video games, in teams that are symmetrically played, like a Halo, for instance, the red team tends to win most of the time. Uh, I say most of the time, there are exceptions. Uh, the one that I remember being specifically mentioned in the episode was League of Legends, where, at least at one point, the blue team won most of the time because blue made them think more strategically and long term and red made the enemy think more short term and so that actually like changed their play styles as they were color X or color Y um, in other words I'm looking to try to create a game that makes you more inclined to be uh, well I guess to think long term to be contemplative to be, well, creative, thoughtful, that sort of thing, rather than this, what's the stereotype of the, the burn player in magic, just, ha ha, throw all my spells out, I win. Yeah, I, I know that burn is more complicated than that, um, but that is the stereotype, and it's a little bit of a chicken and egg thing, because is the color making you act that way, or are the spells themselves making that type of gameplay more viable? I would actually argue the latter. Um, that the red spells themselves are what's doing that. Wow, we are getting so off track. Alright, well, listen quickly, everyone, and I'll try to hurry up. <laughs> uh, there's also going to need to be some... I say need to be. I would very much like for there to be voice acting in this, episode, in this online game. Uh, I myself have been a voice actor for... Uh, four and a half years at WUOG, at uh, the radio station at the University of Georgia, um, doing a radio drama for four of those years. I actually have all of the episodes recorded on my computer, and I might start uploading them to YouTube at some point, but frankly, I have s so little time. These are three-hour episodes. We did a uh, midnight to three in the morning every Friday night, Saturday morning, so I definitely do not have time to edit those episodes down, to cut out all the long pauses and uh, um, and the sound spikes and whatnot. I, I definitely don't have time to do all of that right now. Um, but at some point, uh, maybe I'll put up some voice acting samples. I actually do have one, a dramatic reading of mine, of H.P. Lovecraft. I'm a big fan of H.P. Lovecraft literature. You know, maybe not the person... He was a fantastic racist, but uh, as far as his actual literature itself is concerned, I'm very much a fan. Uh, in any case, The Other Gods is something that I read. And I'm pretty... actually, now that I think about it, I should probably clarify, because a lot of viewers for this channel are not native English speakers. Fantastic in that sense does not mean that I agree with his racism. It means fantastic as in, in the realm of fantasy. It's it's beyond reality to that extent. Um, in other words, that was a, way over the top, is what I mean by that. Um, 
Maybe I should, could give you some voice acting samples right now, but I've also been working all day, and what I do is customer service. Uh, that's what I do besides the YouTube channel. So my voice may be a little bit shot. Um, if any of you are familiar with, I believe his name is Crispin Freeman, I believe is the name. He's a, he does a lot of voice acting on animes. Uh, his most famous one, almost without a doubt, is Alucard from Helsing Ultimate. And if you give me some time, I can get in, I, I can't get that exact voice, but I can get something very similar to it. Uh, my, my, I have a little ritual to try to get into the voice, where I have water with lemon and I have to like really relax myself and uh, do it like that for a while to sort of like get my voice a little bit lower, and and then I can get into it. But it's a it, this is okay. This this is not it. I promise you, I'm not going for that right now. Um, I don't actually know what I don't actually know what I was doing right there. But I can already tell when I try to go into that voice that I'm a little bit hoarse right now. So I, you know, we'll get to that later. But some silly voices. Everyone, everyone can do this for us. Uh, if you're familiar with Meat Rod from Aquatoon, Hunger Force, or Lula and Stitch, no, Stitch, and you'll sound like they'll kill Star. Okay, oh, okay. Before I annoy the ever-living hell out of every one of you. Um, yeah, so that that's a, a voice that I like to do. Uh, Meat Rod's just my favorite character to do a voice for, that's all. Um, One thing I like to do as a as a customer service agent is, and this isn't something I do intentionally. Um, it started out just being something that people heard from me, and then I started working on it. Uh, I actually do a female voice. It's um, apparently it doesn't sound like it when it's not over the phone, but so this is my real. This is basically my real voice. I'm enunciating more and whatnot, but you know, you you watch my videos. This is me when I'm not super excited or anything like that. Um, but when I'm talking on the phone, I like to do, I, or not like to do, I do a voice like this uh, because it keeps the p sound from entering my microphone quite as much. And so apparently to some people, this makes me sound female. But to me, it doesn't. I kind of don't get it, but I also know me. And again, apparently it sounds a little bit different over the phone. Uh, anyway, the the point is the point I'm trying to make is that while I don't think that I can do any good voice samples right now, I have a, a decent range of voices. Uh, if you've watched Naruto the Abridged series, Yu-Gi-Oh the Abridged series, I took inspiration from some of those. So Pegasus, mm. that sort of thing. <laughs> wow. Um, but uh, so if you're interested in doing some voice acting. I may be needing some for the show, for the uh, not the show. The show is uh, is over. Uh, we did eight seasons and then, and then that was it. So uh, eight seasons strong. But I mean the online game. Then, uh, by all means, I'll be looking. Let's see. Something's okay. Never mind. I'm sorry. Something going on over here that. Uh, Thankfully, you cannot see. <sighs> now for the the bad news. We went through all of that. Now for the bad news. So, this directly pertains to the YouTube channel itself. I don't think that I should go into too much detail about it. I do know that... Uh, one of the members of her family, or not members of her family, friends of her family watches my YouTube videos to try to, you know, pick out m moments that can be used against me, but I'm currently going through a, a divorce case. It's a custody case as well. Uh, of course, it's contested. Um, without going into too many details about it, uh, she left me, left with the baby, and, you know, that's where we are. That was uh, a while ago. And for three and a half months, uh, I didn't see my daughter except for five and a half hours is what it ended up being. So that sucks. Um, and, and before I go into this, I don't want anyone to think that I'm some like 
anti-feminist or anything like that. I am most certainly not, like, in that camp. It's, I'm not saying this is like an all-women thing or anything like, anything like that. I, I know it sounds silly to even say, but if I don't, I'm sure the comments will be, you know, Lewis's Law. Um, but it ended up being, or I say ended up, it, it's still ongoing, but what, it ended up being the case that I had to sell, let's see, what are we up to now? I think it's been about. I could actually. I could get out the exact number if you give me just a moment. Um, one thousand one hundred sixty-five. Excuse me, ninety-five dollars um, that I've had to sell for uh, magic cards. And thankfully, a lot of that uh, has come from just selling dual lands. Unfortunately, a lot of that has, coming, has come from just selling dual lands. Um, they have literally outperformed the stock market by a substantial margin in the time that I've had them, of course. And Legacy, in fact, is my, is my baby. It's my, the first video I ever did on this YouTube channel was a Legacy, in fact, deck. And I no longer have the pieces to make that... To, to play that without proxies anymore. Um, so, for the time being, um, what does this mean for you? What this means is I may have to do less deck brewing for the time being um, because I just simply have fewer cards. Um, I can't really... Jeez. One of the... Uh, one of the reasons that she says, anyway, that she left me, you know, I, I can't get into her mind, I don't know, but one of the reasons that she says she left me is that she thought that I prioritized magic over being with my kid, which, I guess, if you were from her point of view, I guess, I can, I can see where she's coming from. I, I obviously disagree with her 100%, and if you worked with me, you know, you heard me talk about her all the time. And if you were in my classes, you know, I'd show me those pictures again on my phone. Show me the pictures of Eva. But I guess from her point of view, from her perspective, you know, I can see where she came up with that impression. She didn't get out of the house much. She didn't, outside of our group of magic friends, she didn't really see many people, so she didn't talk to you know, the people I spoke with, and so she probably didn't get, or not probably, she definitely didn't get a good sample of, you know, the people that I talked their ears off talking about my kid, talking about Evangeline. Um, and also, you know, as if that wasn't enough, you know, now I'm over here selling magic cards so that I can get by. Um, part of that at the time was that I had just left my job to move in with her, and then she kicked me out, so I needed to sell cards just to just to get by at the time. And part of that now is because of some new costs that have come up. Um, again, I know that uh, one of their family friends listens in, so I don't want to go into too much detail. Um, some of you are already familiar with who this is. Um, leaving some comments on some of my videos, uh, specifically ones that are about or include Evangeline, my daughter, um, basically trolling, trying to get a reaction out of me so that it, you know, makes me look bad and then that can be used against me later and so on and so forth. It's, it's, you know, I guess that when, when children, what's the saying? Yeah, I'm not going to get it exactly right, but when children are brought into the equation, people do crazy things. That's sort of what's going on here. Um, I, I hope you'll, you know, accept if I have some proxies that I bring in every now and then. Obviously, I can't take them to F&M, but in some casual games, if I just proxy up some of the lands I had to sell, I've had to sell duels, fetches, shocks, um, some of the more expensive cards. Um, so, for example, I no longer have any Force of Wills. Um, I'm selling some, my voice, actually voice isn't as expensive as it used to be, so that's not quite as impressive, but there's still four. That's what, like 80 bucks? Something like that? Um, four voices. Um, 
Jeez, there were a bunch of bunch of cards. Uh, one of my judge promo sneak attacks. A bunch. So judge promo meddling mage. Um, okay, I'm not gonna go into promo 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 because that makes it sound like I'm showing off. I've been playing for a while. That, you know. And there was a time when I had a job and didn't have bills, so it's not as impressive as it might sound. Um, but if you if you don't mind, that's if you want to do something to help out. You know, I I really don't want to be that guy that you know plugs his Patreon every episode or anything like that. If you need to to get you know to get by to keep doing it, that's fine. Um, there's lots of people that actually do, like, legitimately use that to make more content or just to make content at all. I may be in that spot pretty soon. Uh, we'll see. I don't know yet, but we'll see. Um, but even if you don't, like, if you don't give to the Patreon, just click an ad every now and then. I would really appreciate that. You know, if you don't, you know, I, I hate to say, but ads are kind of how we get by. You know, we YouTubers, to the extent that we do. That's kind of how we get by. Um, if if you can't contribute financially, then in, you know maybe click an ad every now and then. Or if you can promote any art for the game, um, maybe I can do that uh, full time. That's something that I would like to do. Um, not just because you know I'd be designing a card game as a full time thing, but like I said, it is going to have a, a charitable aspect to it. And by aspect, I mean, depending on how much funding we get to start, we're probably going to start off with like 5% of profit goes to charity, and then we'll work our way up from there. Um, um, this is a... Uh, but I've gotten to see her a lot more. I've gotten to see my baby a lot more since then. Um, the other party's been resistant to let me see her more than... It, the the rut that we had gotten into for a while was every other weekend which I, I it's not that I don't have sympathy for people that leave their kids sometimes be, you know I don't I don't know their circumstances maybe there's a, a good reason I just don't know about but to me it seems unfair that like if that there's not really a difference in effect between, uh, like, I didn't leave my kid. My wife left with the kid, and as a result, I didn't see her. But we might end up with the same outcome as if I had left her. That that seems to me to be rather unfair. And I know it's not really about fairness. It's about what's best for her. But, yeah. And, and I really do think that I'm better for her, so that's... I'm not conceding that. I really honestly do think that I would be a better parent. But that's a... that's another story for another time, if you... <sighs> so... Maybe we'll talk about that later. Maybe. Um, in the meantime... <laughs> um, in the meantime, I may have to take more hours at work. Um, thankfully, I have a really great job. Not in terms of pay. It, it's not great. I'm not exactly making six figures. <laughs> but it has really, really flexible hours. And I, I'm not telling you anything that they don't already know, so I guess I don't mind if they if they hear this part. Um, I can take anywhere down to five hours a week and up to 60, which is an insane range for the number of hours you can take at a job. Um, it's not a, like working at, on Etsy. I'm not talking about YouTube. I am actually saying a, a customer service job that I work um, lets me take a pretty flexible number of hours. And as a result, you know, if I need to, if if finances aren't great going forward, I may just have to take more hours. And if if that means less towards the YouTube channel, then I am sorry. I, I really am. It's been awesome hanging out with you guys. And I'll still upload, but I may have to cut back on uploads. 
Uh, there was a time a few weeks back when I said, guys, I'm going to have to suspend the channel. And I said that, and the channel... It may not have looked like it was suspended. It really might not. And I, I am pretty sure that at least one person out there thinks I was lying when I said that. What happened is I recorded a bunch of episodes in like two days. And then I wasn't recording for... It was about two weeks. A little bit more than two weeks. And I was uploading once a day. So it looked like I was still recording. It looked like I was still making those episodes. But if you... Let's Play, or if you watch Let's Plays, you know they can record five, six, seven, so on episodes in a single day, and then just release one a day. Um, that's kind of what I had been doing. So it looked like the channel hadn't really been suspended, it was only off for a little while. And not suspended's a bad word, that makes it sound like I did something against YouTube's, you know, laws or whatnot, YouTube's rules. I just mean having to take more hours at work, and therefore not being able to go to the card shop and record. Uh, that has definitely been an issue. Um, I, I would definitely have more episodes up right now if it were not for having to take... You know, I can, I can jam a lot of hours on the days when I don't have Evangeline, but that means I need to jam a lot of hours on those days. Um, so anyway, uh, if you want to make that no longer the case... Um, like I said, maybe click an ad or two every now and then, and there is a Patreon that you can give to. Um, I, there's a reason why I don't have an intro video or an intro segment on my videos. Like, uh, I know some channels do that, and by all means, go for it. My favorite probably is uh, Mythic MTG Text, Brian Rose, like the ah, as the symbols come up, and then Ch that's cool. I, I don't do that, and I don't do anything on the end saying, like, comment, and subscribe, and by the way, I have a Patreon, and the reason I don't is because I try to keep the gaming experience as pure as I can. It's, like, my videos are hopefully, like, just the game, nothing more, nothing less. Uh, well, okay, some conversations in there every now and then, but, you know, none of the fluff that goes in the beginning and end. Uh, that's just my personal preference, that's my a aesthetic. Um, and so that's why I haven't been putting, you know, sub you know, donate to Patreon at the end of every video. Maybe I would be, ha maybe I would have more subscribers if I did something like that. Maybe I'd have more likes, or maybe, you know, but, but I just don't feel like doing that. I, I don't, it's not my preference. Um, so Elder Scale Worm is doing work. Apparently, you know, I am very much a fan of that, and Cloudstone Curio is out, so it's just a matter of time before shenanigans happen. Uh, I actually don't know if we get to this before the camera dies, uh, but you see that soccer tribe elder in the graveyard? There's, there's an Artisan of Kozilek coming up. Cloudstone Curio plus Artisan of Kozilek, free cast off of Animar plus Soccer Tribe Elder. You do the maths. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Uh, basically, that means that I get to get all of the basics out of my deck and put them on the field. Um, there's a, a number of other ways that you can abuse that. Uh, Alchemist Apprentice lets you draw your deck. Um, what's another one? I, I wish I could remember if I have any sacrifice creatures that deal dan I don't in the deck, but if I have any period to put into the deck, because that is a unique little combo. Unfortunately, it's, it's a three-card combo, Artisan, Cloudstone, and the other card. Um, but once you can get that out, you can do bonkers things like, <laughs> like, draw your deck. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Animar. Yeah, so... That's a random channel announcement. Animar is my main for EDH right now. I've had to sell enough from the Damia deck that Damia is... I could still do it, of course, and Damia was not meant to be played in one-on-one -on -one EDH anyway. It was meant to be a multiplayer, or for me, the way that I play Damia. It was meant to be multiplayer. Infect gives it that one-on-one -on -one angle, but if I were doing 
all in, I'd probably be playing the Mimeoplasm. And Damia lets me, in the late game, reload, which is the biggest weakness to running an Infect deck like this in, uh, in pretty much any format. Once you're out of cards, you don't reload very well, but Damia lets me. Uh, so I can expend resources to kill a player, reload, expend resources to get, and so on and so forth. I hope that I don't have to make less content going forward, but if I do, then I hope that you guys will stick with me and understand. Um, some other miscellaneous announcements. Um, I guess related to having to sell cards is that if I, whether I do or don't make proxies, I might do, uh, I might get onto MTG Workstation and play some games on there, or Cockatrice, and play some games recording my screen. I don't have the money for MTGO uh, to make anything, like, to do like a rogue deck builder style of play. I, I just don't have the money for that. Um, it would take me a while to build up enough of a collection to make some significant content for you on there. Um, so something like MTG Workstation that lets me have all of the cards at the ready right then and there. Um, it's also been good for me when uh, testing this game, when playtesting it uh, and designing. It's easy to tweak uh, individual characters. So anyway, that's a, a feature that you can use. You can design your own cards on there and you can use that system to playtest. And playtesting against yourself means that even when I don't have a design team, uh, I can actually get some work done nonetheless. Um, so this game is, at least as far as one person goes, it's very, very thoroughly tested. Um, I, would, I have tested it with other people as well, just to, uh, just to make sure, you know, you, one person's eyes are not enough. It's like uh, getting someone to proofread your, your essay before you turn it in. Even if you're an English major, you still want to do that, uh, just so that someone else can, you know, catch the mistakes that you don't see yourself. Or, you know, what was Abraham Lincoln's expression? A man who has himself for an attorney has a fool for a client? Something to that effect. Um, that's because you want someone else to see what you can't see um, because of your circumstances. Uh, very similarly here, um, having other people to design with you, oh, it's such a boon, such a boon. Well, um, if there's anything else that I can think of, I will let you know. Um, what am I doing now? Really, what am I doing? Um, I think that was a Cloudstone Curio shenanigan. Oh, there's the artisan in my hand, okay. So we're about to we're about to do it pretty soon. He's looking through my graveyard. Um, I think they've they've figured out what's about to happen at this point. Well, first I'm getting the tower geist. I'm still building up counters on Animar, um, so that I can free cast the artisan, so I can do that and get all the basics out. And uh, I do I, I'll, I will let you know because I'm about to cut the video off in just a bit, so you won't see all of this. I do make some pretty serious mistakes. When you're playing a complicated deck like this, unfortunately I guess it's part and parcel of running it, you, you know, uh, so in this case for instance, I get board wiped. And I made sure, because of Cloudstone Curio, I left Artisan in my hand, as, you, as you're supposed to do. But, unfortunately, I, in the process of putting stuff into my grave, let my commander go to my grave. And maybe they would have given me a take back seat. Maybe they would have let me put it in the command zone. But I said, you know what? That's I made the mistake. I'll, I'll run with it. They, they let me do that. And then I realized, oh, I have artisan in my hand. I can get it back. Ah. <laughs> very very light. Ah. Um. <laughs> so that happened. I still have to build up. I sort of wonder if they made Animar nowadays, if they would have used the experience counters. And then I think, wait, that would be seven steps beyond broken, doing it that way. Oh my goodness, that would be stupidly broken. Uh, but yeah, you, you see what I'm up to here. Um, I'm letting them know that's what I'm doing. 
uh, Soccer Tribe Elder hits the grave, Soccer tri Tribe comes back, da 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 da, get all my basics out. Yeah. So I felt really proud of that. I, I didn't, until this game, I did not know that I could do that. Um, it, it was not a thought that crossed my mind. Believe it or not, somehow. Using Artisan like that. Um, with my sack creatures. <laughs> you also see the Peregrine Drake. So, what happens with Peregrine Drake and Cloudstone Curio and Artisan of Kozilek? Yeah, I get infinite mana. Um, more specifically, what we care about for right now is that I can use this loop to untap all of the basics that are coming in tapped off of the Sakura Tribe Elder. So, I'm just about to do that. So I get out, uh, this deck has four basic forests, two basic islands, and a basic mountain. And I'm doing the, uh, oh by the way, I take the counter off Animar because I'm going to do this loop any number of times. Animar is basically infinity at this, in, at this point. Uh, you can probably see who's winning. Uh, Animar is going to swing pretty shortly at the one player whose colors Animar has protection from. There's a Daxus, the return player, swing at them, um, and then that's basically it. I mean, it goes on for a bit longer than that, and after the Daxus player is eliminated, he continues doing his thing. He continues um, basically like, generaling them, coaching them, and... I, I know that sounds abrasive, but he actually was very good at it. He uh, he was going around the, the table saying, okay, we need to cooperate, let's do this, you know, here's what he probably has, and, you know, let's let's play around this card, and right now we need to deal with that. Oh, he has Kessig Wolfron, kill him now, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. Oh, well, I guess I don't kill him this turn then, because he, he does... Ra I, maybe it's not him that I kill this turn. Oh, it's the it's the mono-white player. No, no, maybe the mono-white player is the one with the wrath. Um, I think I swung at Daxos, and the mono-white player on top um, is the one with the wrath. And he gets me. One of the two does, right after this. And I have to rebuild with Animar in the grave, and yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. The, the way we're going about doing this. Alright. I guess that's it for this announcement video. Again, you sort of see... You even see the Omnith player standing up. Um, yeah, he, he knows what's happening. I'll, uh... I guess I'll let you go, YouTube. Thank you very much. If you've been watching this far, and whatever the heck I'm... Oh yeah, I'm untapping. I'm showing this is how I'm untapping. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to Ulamog from this point, because that would just be silly. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, there are some other things I could have done from this stage. Uh, I can, now that I have infinite mana, Silverglade into all of my forest, including the non-basics. Uh, I can scry over and over and over and over again until I find the specific cards I need, and then, you know, use the uh, Tower Geist to get the specific card into my hand, and go from there. Uh, yeah, yeah, everyone's, everyone's picking up. Okay, well, not picking up, untapping. Alright, I'll see you later, YouTube. Thank you very much for listening through this and hearing me out. And you guys can probably imagine how much you mean to me. Take care.